the illustrator Philippe de Pasquier. I know of his work. Love it. He was my uh, geography lecturer at college. All right. And if you look right. at all his images, all his illustrations have a geographic theme, and he slides them in in the background, like a globe in the background or a, a wind vane. Or, or... <coughs> right, we're ready to rock. We're live on YouTube. Let's get everybody in. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to week four of Teaching Live Grammar. Uh, we hope you're all seated comfortably. Um, it's a bitterly cold morning here in uh, North Lancashire. Uh, my uh, cough's not much better, so I may well disappear at moments as, as I descend into <coughs> coughs and splutters and general um, poorliness, but uh, we'll, we'll struggle on manfully as we always do. How are you this morning, Pi? Bright sunshine here. Glorious day. Could be in the Caribbean, John. <laughs> That's a bit uh, of yeah. an exaggeration there, but all's good. And you, and you David? Yeah, very good. Very similar to John. Quite cold here. The, my car was so frosted over this morning, um, I couldn't open the door. The door had actually frozen to the to the car, and I thought I was going to pull the handle off pulling that hard, but eventually got in, got the kids to school. Um, yeah, so all raring to go here, Pi. Okay, it reminds me, um, David, of uh, um, when it was really cold, about 35 years ago, I had an Austin 30 little old car called goat's milk that one i know yeah. goat's milk yeah the a30 and to in the morning when it was really cold i used to breathe into the keyhole because it, it it wasn't electronic in those days you had a key so to get it going i'd have to breathe into the keyhole in order to melt the ice inside the lock but of course if you got too close, because it was really cold, you, your lips could stick to the keyhole. <laughs> My question there is, um, have, I've got images of you still there, you know, half nine when you should have been teaching a class of year four children with your lips stuck to a car. I know, it's, it's an appalling thought, isn't it? But anyway, we ought to crack on, and today... We, we had a good look at phrases, those little units of meaning. And the bigger ones are clauses. They're rather like mini sentences, really. And we're going to have a look at sentence sentences, main clauses, subordinate clauses, and a little look at commas as well. Now, technically, this is a technical thing. There are four types of sentence. You've got your basic statements, and most things we say are statements. Then you've got your questions. So a statement might be something like, um, Pi went outside. It's a statement. Question would be, of, um, let's turn that into a question. Why did Pi go outside? So those two we're very used to. Then the third type is what I used to call bossy verbs. Um, so these are the imperatives. These are ones where you're telling somebody what to do. You get them in instructional writing uh, and you get them a lot in school. Put that down, sit there. So um, walk down the road, come over here. And what you'll notice in those sentences, they all start with a verb. They're telling you what to do. And those technically are called commands. So we've got statements, questions, and commands. Basically, that's easy. The tricky bit is there is a technical type of sentence called an exclamation. Now, we use exclamation marks in our writing all the time. Uh, use it for drama. For it, exclamation mark. Stop, exclamation mark. Sometimes uh, to suggest that something is really amazing, like 
the blue whale is the largest mammal on the planet, exclamation mark, because it's a big fact. But technically, an exclamation sentence has to start with what or how, and you're exclaiming about something like, what a hot drink John is drinking. What a long way to walk. How tired I have become. So it's got to start with what and how. So we've got four, and as I say, these are technical things, four types of sentences, statements we do a lot, questions we ask a lot, your bossy verbs, imperatives. And if you've got something that starts with what or how, it might be a question or it might be an exclamation. And the best one for exclamations, um, if you think about um, Little Red Riding Hood, what big eyes you've got. What strong teeth you've got. All I've ever to eat you with. And those what ones, what and how, um, those ones are exclamations. It's a technical term. So what we're going to do, David, is we're going to have a go at trying to create some of these. So if you're partner A, you start off with giving me a topic, and then we're going to make up a statement, a question, a command, an exclamation. We bounce it backwards and forwards. And for the first two minutes, you'll be making up the topic. And then the, the next two minutes, I'll be making up the topic. So give us a topic. And I've got to do a statement, which is the easy one. Um, John and his bike. Oh, OK. So a statement about John and his bike. John likes riding his bike. Now you've got to do a question. Uh, well, the obvious one would be, why does John enjoy riding his bike? I've got to do a command. Get on that bike, John. So you've got to start with the imperative verb, remember. Now, you've got to do the hardest, I think, which is an exclamation. So it's either a what or a how start, but it mustn't be a question. Um, what great bike John has. Yes. <laughs> OK, give us another topic. Um, let's go with... Um... uh my curry so uh, something to do with me in a curry how did i knew you were gonna go there <laughs> okay david See, loves eating jalfrezi curry you're a question david um what or where does david enjoy eating jalfrezi curry the most i'm a command that's an easy one Eat that curry, David. And an exclamation. Um, what what, curry. <laughs> what large chilies in that gel frazy? Absolutely. And then after two minutes, we swap over. So let's do that. So I'm going to choose the topic. So I'm going to choose the, uh, I'm tempted to choose food, but we could be here for a long time if I choose food. So let's have, um, let's have uh, a, let's do a school one. So let's have a football. So you do a statement. Um, school football is the most exciting type of football. Why do so many people enjoy going on a Saturday to watch football games? You're a command. Stay on the wing, John. <laughs> and I have an exclamation mark. What a terrible football player <laughs> that young man is. <laughs> Let's do one more. Well, I think everybody's got the idea. <laughs> so um, what will be? Oh, right. Cough. Uh -huh. yeah, cough. Uh, this, this isn't as easy as you think, is it? No, it isn't. It's a technical thing. So are you doing partner A? Are you doing partner A? Um, no, you're doing a statement and then I'm doing a question. OK, so uh, I'm going to go with. Um, uh, John's cough. It's deteriorating quickly. Where did John catch such a bad cough? And who from? Stop coughing, John. 
<laughs> All right, and mine is an exclamation. What a disgusting cough. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Folks. <laughs> so partner A just it gives the topic. I mean it goes statement, question, command, exclamation. And after two minutes, you swap roles. Just watch that um, final one, the exclamation. It's got to start with what or how, and it mustn't be a question. It's like making a comment on something. Right. So we've got the uh, uh, four minutes on the timer. So it's topic, then it's statement, question, um, command, imperative, and exclamation. exclamation. That's right. It. Off we go. Okay, swap over role. So uh, it's, if you weren't choosing the topic before, you are now. And that sound signifies the end of the game. So if we come 
off the uh, timing page and go straight to the grammar session. So along the top on the menu, go to sessions, click on 11 a.m. session. And here we are on the grammar session. So we'll start off with our first Padlet activity. OK, so we're thinking about um, sentences. Um, David, I've sent you a little message, by the way. Uh, we're think thinking about sentences uh, here, John, and um, I'll do the first one and then there are six others. And basically all, all you've got to do is to read it and decide, is it a sentence or not? And if it's not a sentence for any reason, rewrite it so it is a sentence. So that first one says, Mrs. Bingo, the cat across the garden. Well, it's got a capital letter and it's got a full stop. So those are two basic requirements. But it sounds a bit odd to me, John. Mrs. Bingo, the cat across the garden. We're yes, missing indeed. a verb, aren't we? Yes, there, there is no verb. We don't know yeah. whether she probably being thrown across the garden. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to say Mrs. Bingo, Bingo the cat chase. across the garden. <laughs> yeah, chase the cat across the garden. So what we're not doing is embellishing, adding anything or anything like that. You're literally just <laughs> correcting. Is it a sentence? And if it's not a sentence, rewrite it and make it a sentence. And of course, the sentence has to have capital letter, full stop and the right words in it. So we've got the king ate the donut, the cat ate the cream. The rush down the street chased by a policeman. Eat up all your food. Snakes feared by most people. When I to town, I went shopping. I going home soon. Uh, not as straightforward as it seems, John. And obviously on the Padlet, we've only got a few minutes. Do them sentence by sentence, everybody. And you're basically editing. It's called copy editing. And you're just trying to make the thing accurate into um, correct punctuation and grammar. That's all you're doing, punctuation and grammar. See how we get on. Well, it's obviously a lot going on because I can see two hundred and forty people are having a go at this or. 240 machines and if it's 250 and if it's two to a machine that's over 500 people john yep some people will have their own machines i can imagine so probably maybe 300 400 yeah it's a lot of people uh, possibly doing all all the sentences in one go rather than doing uh could well, be but again, now Kate, <laughs> mrs bingo the cat across the garden it still isn't a sentence because it's not got a verb in it. All sentences have verbs in them. Misha, snakes feared by most people. Mrs. Bingo followed the cat across the garden. Now, Nancy, if you're going to go, Mrs. Bingo, there is a cat halfway across the garden. I think that's speech, so you'd need speech marks. And Maya, Mrs. Bingo ate the cat across the garden. It's sort of... <laughs> Great. That, that's, that's very funny. It works. Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Bingo, the cat, ran across the garden. I think if you're going to do that, Tom, you'd need Mrs. Bingo, comma, the cat, ran across the garden. It's it's what's called in parenthesis. You're dropping the, the notion that Mrs. Bingo is a cat. Um, Rakana and Princess, yep, spot on. Mrs. Bingo walked the cat across the garden. Uh, Elisha ate from HSP. Mrs. Bingo, you need a capital B for Bingo. It's her name. And you've got no full stop. So two things there. So whilst it seemed, and Harry, you've fallen into the same trap. St. John's, you've not got a capital letter. For Mrs. Bingo, you've got to have a capital for Bingo. It's her name. 
and Freddie from Rolvenden, the king ate the donut and the cat ate the cream. So a simple conjunction thrown in there, which makes it perfect. Yeah, and that's a, that's a tricky one, that the king one. Yeah, so the, but yeah, and is the obvious one, but there are, there are others you could use. Yes. Um, and I just saw one, Reese from Winton Primary, the king ate the donut as the cat. Um, so we're using a conjunction to join the ate the cream to join the two ideas together. So spot on. Same from St. Edwards, you've given a capital to the cat for some reason and missed the full stop off. So just double check all of these things. Harry from St. John's, you missed a full stop off. Remember, it's grammar, so you've got to check. It's not a sentence till it's got a capital, a full stop, and it needs a, um, a, a verb of some sort. So Harry from St. Wilfrid's, can you eat up all of your food? So uh, turning that uh, question, but uh, that which was eat up all of your food, eat up all your food by adding a subject. Can you eat up all your food and a verb? Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, but Rishi and Yomna have gone for eat up all your food and removed the question mark and put up a full stop. So turning it into a um, an imperative, imperative, eat up all your food, which actually works. Yeah. But it, if you were going to use an imperative, you'd probably use an exclamation mark. I would have thought so, yeah. Toby from Walton, the king ate the donut whilst the cat ate the cream. But if you reread your sentence, you've got something in there that's a bit annoying for you. So you could edit that one, Toby. <coughs> and the king ate the donut, but the cat ate the cream. Max yes. And Tally from MJS. Murray and Tilly, uh, can you go to bed now? That's a question. So you need a question mark. Let's have a quick look at some of these. I don't think that we didn't have that one as a as a sentence. So I'm going home soon. I going home soon. When I to town, I went shopping. I am going home soon, Joe and Alfie. Well done. Oops. Wrong page. There we go. Well, he's got eat up every <laughs> little bit of your food. Will you eat up all of your food? I will go home now. I'm going home shortly. Yeah, they all work. They rushed down the street while being chased by a policeman. Yep, that works. Right, we'll come out of the Padlet. And uh, David will moderate any remaining sessions on there. So we go from Padlet 1 straight into Padlet 2. So we go on to the Padlet activity. Yeah, and out. There were one or two silly errors there, John, where people have got Mrs Bingo's name with a small b. or it, it, Because it's grammar... This is why I say we're not embellishing, we're not adding, we're, we're just correcting it. And, and because of that, you've got to be attentive to the detail, haven't you? And we all know this stuff, but can we do it? OK, now we're moving on a little bit, a little bit harder, perhaps. So what have we got here? We've got some hoping to see the dog. He peered over the wall. My, ow, my computer's not obeying me, which is a little bit annoying. Um, so what we're looking for is the main clause here. Um, I'll do the first one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, very seven. I'll do the first one. So we've got two clauses. Now, I know I've got two clauses, John, because I've got two verbs. I've got he peered over the wall and hoping to see the dog. So two things are going on. Two clauses. But which is the main and which is the subordinate? Now, subordinate means less important. If if somebody in life is a subordinate to you, it means they're lesser imp less important. So of those two, which one is less important? The so, main will be standing on its own and it can act as a sentence. 
the subordinate is the extra little bit of information that's been added on and it cannot stand on its own. It needs the main clause. So which do you reckon, John? So he peered over the wall could be a sentence on its own. So that's the main clause and hoping to see the dog. It leaves you hanging. Yeah. So that's, that's just the extra bit of information added to the main clause. So hoping to see the dog, he peered over the wall. So, so, that, so the, he peered over the wall is the main clause. Yeah. Uh, hoping to see the dog is the subordinate. Subordinate, yeah. subordinate clause and it, it can't work in its own. So the idea is on the padlet, you whack down, he peered over the wall. So all I want is the main clause. Um, and um, it'll stand as a sentence. So you've got excited by the music, the class dance. She jumped over the path while they were chasing her. After the king ate the donut, the monkey slept. Rain falls when clouds get too heavy. Pete, who was feeling weary, sat down on a bench. And after running for a long time, Bob sneezed until his glasses fell off. So can you write down the main clauses? Mm, and some of them are not, not quite as obvious uh, as you might think. The first few are obvious. Yes. And then it gets harder. The last three are slightly harder. So you might want to start with the last three if you're feeling confident, because this is a relatively straightforward activity. You've probably done this sort of thing before. And Finley, <coughs> I like the way you've remembered a capital letter and full stop because it is a sentence standing on its own. Well done. And you're getting a lot of clicks on there, Finley. <laughs> I'll give him one two. Abby, uh, Albie, rather, um, from MJS, Bob sneezed until his glasses fell off. Quite right. Has Riley and Rock Sorry, has that it came, came from, John, because Riley and Yon, I don't know where that comes from, Bob sneezing till his glasses fell off, but also it's it, not a main it, clause. It's two clauses, Bob, Bob sneezing and, and glass fall, glasses, glasses fall. falling off. So that was your sentence, Pi. After running for a long time, Bob sneezed until his glasses fell off. Hoping to see the dog, he peered over the wall. <laughs> I don't understand that one no. at all. Okay, so, you, so, so hang on, which one? Oh, somebody combined two different two sentences into one. I don't know what they're doing. Um, Hasnane and Raymond from St Edwards, hoping to see the dog is a subordinate clause. You're trying to write the main one down. So if I came into a room and said, hoping to see the dog, it, it, it doesn't make sense on its own. So that's the subordinate one. Annabelle okay. and Louis, you need the main clause. You've got two clauses. You've written down, it starts to rain. Uh, and something else. I can't see what, what it is now. It's moved, but you've got uh, two clauses. Rolvenden, you've very speedily gone through writing down main clauses, uh, but they're not sentences because you haven't used capital letters and full stops. So you need to edit yours. So Luke... One, two, three of those aren't right, but Luke. So if I came into a room and said, while they were chasing her, right, it's, doesn't, that's, that's doesn't stand on its own. It sounds odd to me. So that one needs looking at. OK, so we'll come out of the Padlet and we'll just have a quick look back at these sentences. So the first one, dead simple, hoping to see the dog, he peered over the wall. So it's he peered over the wall is the main clause. The second one is just the same, excited by the music, the class danced. So the class dance can stand on its own as a sentence. So that's the main clause. 
Uh, this one, the next one, she jumped over the path while they were chasing her. Now, while they were chasing her, doesn't stand on its own because it needs more information for it to make complete sense. So the first part, she jumped over the path, is the main clause. The next one, after the king ate the donut, the monkey slept. Um, after the king ate the donut, the monkey slept. Which one's the main clause there? Um, the monkey slept is in fact the main cause because after the king ate the donut, something needs to happen. So there's more information required. Rain falls when clouds get too heavy. That's a tricky one and not many people tackled that one, I noticed. So Pi, which is the main clause in that one? Well, if, if I came into the room and said to you, when clouds get too heavy, you'd be saying, yeah, what happens when clouds get too heavy? So rain falls is the main clause. And then the extra bit of information is when clouds get too heavy. Now, the next one down, Pete, who is feeling weary, sat down on a bench. Now, this time we've got an extra clause dropped in who is feeling weary. So he's feeling weary he's sitting on a bench. So. Let's have a look. Who was feeling weary? If I said to you, who was feeling weary? It sounds like a question, I know, but it's either that or Pete sat down on a bench. Which is the main clause. Exactly. With a bit dropped into it. Yeah. The last one is even harder because you've got three clauses. You've got after running for a long time, Bob sneezed until his glasses fell off. So which do you think there stands on its own? Bob sneezed. Absolutely. And the other bits, you can't you can't say to somebody until his glasses fell off. No, I don't think anybody got well, quite a few people put down Bob sneezed until his glasses um, fell off. Yeah. But, but that's two clauses. You've got the conjunction there until the until bit. And that very often, if you look at it, you've got until who, when, after, while. So. If you get one of those joining words, nearly always that comes in front of the main clause, uh, the subordinate clause. So Bob sneezed would be the, the clause. Absolutely. For yeah, you've got it. OK, so we need to go to. Um, let's have a quick look at the. I'll just quick look at the uh, basics of sentences, a quick look at the PowerPoint before doing the jot cast. OK, so um, if you can click on that, John, yeah, I'm just trying to I'm, I'm, it's not again, it's not uh, it's not expanding for some reason. So I'm not quite sure doing reasonably well. So we're looking at sentence types, main and subordinate and commas. So I'll just talk you through this. So what we know about sentences, it's a clump of words that act together as a unit of meaning. Each sort of stands sensibly on its own and you always get capital letter full stop or question mark stroke exclamation mark and it makes sense on its own so everybody knows that they have to have verbs in them now here are the types of sentence that we've got we've went over that in the game statements and questions um and the commands telling you to do something walk down the road those are the easy ones the muddly one is what a long way to walk how tall you have grown what big eyes you've got grandma that's the little tricky one. Um, and um, you can get slightly caught on that one. OK, if we look at number four, then the clauses. So the clauses, a little group of words built around a verb. If you've got a verb, you've got a clause on your hand. So we've got the dog ate the bone. That's one clause. The dog ate the bone before jumping onto the sofa. Two things are happening, eating bones and jumping onto sofa. And then we've got three clauses. They're often called multi clauses, meaning many. He ate the bone, jumped on the sofa, and snoozed. So we've got three things going on. That's relatively spotting. straightforward. Spotting the verb is counting the verbs is the key to that, isn't it? It's Pine? the key to that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, then on number four, we've got uh, main and subordinate. So main clause stands on its own and it acts like a sentence. The old man ran down the hill. And then the subordinate, it is like an extra bit of information I've added on for the reader, but we don't need it necessarily. The old man ran down the hill after eating lunch. 
if I came into the room and said to you, after eating lunch, you'd be saying, yeah, 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 give me the other bit. So it's in blue, that main clause. OK. Um, subordinate means less important. We had that. They don't make sense on their own. And they need that main clause in order to make sense. The dog slept after eating lunch. Or you could say, John, after eating lunch, comma, the dog slept. Or the dogs, comma, after eating lunch, comma, slept. That's uh, an important little bit there because we're going to look at what are called adverbials because you can move those around. But we'll look at that next time, I think. OK, so um, subordinate clauses can be found in different places in the sentence. After the king ate the donut, the monkey slept. So we've got the monkey slept is our main clause. Um, and we can move those around um, very often. So we've got rain falls. So the subordinate can come at the end, can come at the beginning. Um, and also can be dropped in the middle. Pete, who was feeling weary? And then in the last one, you've got subordinate cla clauses either side. So basically, John, they can come anywhere in the sentence, pretty much. They're not always at the end of the sentence. That's the point. They're yeah. tricky little things. A um, little bit on commas. We all know in year two, you would have been taught commas in a list. He picked up a lemon, an apple, three buns and a cake. And you're not supposed to put a, a comma before an and. Then you've got your fronted adverbials. Slowly, comma, excited by the news, comma, after that, comma, and furthermore, comma. So we know about those. We'll let work on those in the next session, I think. So commas used to help the reader after subordinate clauses at the beginning of the sentence, hoping she wouldn't be seen, she ran. Because it was cold, they wrapped up warm. And you also need them sometimes at the end of sentences where you get an either an ing well, Eddingly, really, an ED bit, an ing bit, or an LY bit. She ran, comma, stumbling on the pavement. The cows could stood still, comma, bewildered by the noise. You can usually hear where you need a comma, as it often acts like a nice <laughs> little break between two bits of meaning. Then you've got this word parenthesis, which is a technical term, John, and it's just where you drop a bit in. Bill the pirate's son, ran for it. So your main clause is Bill ran for it. We dropped a phrase in, a noun phrase, the pirate's son. Then you've got a relative clause, Bill, who was scared, ran for it. And then we've got a subordinate clause, Bill, hoping he would be saved, ran for it. So when bits are dropped in, extra information's dropped in, it's called in parenthesis. <laughs> and it's a technical term. It just means put a comma either side. And of course, we know about punctuating speech. You've always got to get that bit that's it in there inside the speech marks. And unless it's a an exclamation or a question mark, it's going to be a comma followed by a small letter, unless it's somebody's name. And the last little bit here. We use commas sometimes to avoid a misunderstanding. I quite like this one, um, this example. Before drinking, sorry, before drinking Bob, Joe and Tom were thirsty. And where I put the comma sounds as if Joe and Tom, being very thirsty, drank Bob. That's what the first sentence says. But of course, that's not correct. It should be before drinking, Bob, Joe and Tom were thirsty. Very good. <laughs> yeah, that, there's lots of people like to uh, show up examples of those in uh, on websites and social media when, when people have made a... a uh, a mixed use of comma. <laughs> right, on to the live writing jotcast. Okay, we're doing well, actually. Um, now, this is a little bit trickier, so concentrate. I'll explain it. So if you scroll a bit, John, just so I can look at my first example, which I've done for you. So I've got two sentences. And this, again, is this particular example is about the pronouns, isn't it? Because John looked at the banana. John ate the banana greedily. Um, you know, John peeled the banana. You can hear it it going on too much. Sounds like a year one writing. So what the, the challenge is, it's called combination. Can you book, combine the ideas to get one nice fluent sentence? So there are three different ways I thought of doing it. John looked at the banana and ate it greedily. Or looking at the banana, John ate it greedily. Or greedily, John looked at the banana 
and ate it. Do you have a favourite of those three, John, or do they sort of all ring okay to you? Um, I, probably the last one, actually. Yeah, it it focuses very much because greedily comes first. It focuses very much on the fact he was greedy, looked at the banana and ate it. I go for that last one. So if we're doing the next one, the fox slept, it had travelled a long way. So you've got two sentences. Can you combine them together to make one sentence? Let's have a look further down. Susie rode a bike. She went down the lane. She was being chased. So you've got three sentences. Can you combine them into a nice flowing sentence? And you'd certainly don't want to be repeating those two she's, do you? But ah, this is now four sentences getting harder. The giant loomed. It loomed over the villagers. You've got to try and find a way of getting rid of one of those loomed. It stomped down. Sorry, it stooped down. It, dra it drank from the ponds. So you've got three it's. So can you combine those four sentences into one fluent sentence? And the last one looks the hardest, but in some ways, I don't know. The cat crept. It was a marmalade cat. It went along a wall. It went slowly. It had seen a bird. Can you make that into one nice flowing sentence without nasty little repetitions? So this is about <laughs> sentence combination. And to do that, you'll need probably some ma a main clause and maybe some subordinate bits. Let's see what you do. Oh, my dog. Apologies. I'll just mute myself. And deal with the dog. Everybody can get going. Em. So we're on that third one, a uh, second one there. The fox slept. It had travelled a long way. So we got uh, the fox slept after it had travelled a long way. Faris from Hallsville, well done. And Rahul from Walton. The fox slept because it had travelled a long way. Like that. And Aurora, well done. Having travelled a long way, the fox slept. So you bunged your subordinate clause, you ring one up the front. Well done. You've got your comma in. Excellent. Ruby, yep, you've got an as in the middle there. Nicely done. Being chased, Susie rode her bike down the lane. That works. The fox was sleeping. Jack, that works. Uh, Shiv, I don't think you need the comma in the middle, Shiv. Madison, that works. Amina, well done. You've got the comma right from Hallsville. Fox slept after a long day. It's not quite the same thing, is it? Because it was travelling a long way. Quite a lot. Jack, well done. You've got the because Fox slept before it had travelled a long way, yeah. One or two people forgetting that they're writing sentences and there's, uh, there's missing full stops and capital letters. Yeah, uh, Kieran, Hallsville, you've got to have a capital, Kieran. And I think you need to check the spelling of travelled. It's got two L's in it. Hold on, Ruby. Well done, Jack. Uh, yeah. Finley from Rolvenden. The giant loomed over the villagers, stooped down and drank from the pond. Excellent. Well done. Kieran, you've got to check your capital letters. And Ben annoyingly travelled has got two L's. <laughs> is it one of those ones in America where they would only spell it with one L? An American spelling is to spell it with one L, I think. Yeah, I think so. But people say, oh, you could do either, but I think I think it's two L's in this country. Yes. Amber, you're almost there. After travelling a long way, comma, the fox slept. Full stop.
And Shivana from Hallsville, the fox had traveled a long way, so it slept. Well done. Let's see some of you trying to tackle some of these longer, tougher ones. Oh, well, Freddie's had a go at the last, at the um, the one with the cat. But annoyingly, Freddie, you've missed out your capital letter of full stop. But it's a good go at it. So, uh, how's it gone? Benji and Lexi, uh, the marmalade cat slept, uh, slept, crept slowly because it had seen a bird. Now, you've almost there, but you've missed out the went along the wall sentence. Um, Zara, <laughs> you, you muddled yourself a bit here, Zara, because you've added in something about lemonade and you've repeated the lemonade twice. So you've made it a harder thing than it need be um so you need to relook at that so elijah uh sorry lola and falcon uh from hsp the cat crept because it was a marmalade cat again you haven't combined all the sentences into one sentence so that's the challenge with that one there's five separate sentences there can you and and you've got to keep and as well as turning it into one sentence you've got to keep all that, that information in that one sentence. So you can't just say the cat crept because it was a marmalade cat because it doesn't give you the, the next three sentences worth of information. Um, Fred from HSP, as it had travelled a long way, the fox slept. Now, you're absolutely right. There are three important things you've missed off. The capital letter, the full stop and the comma. But if you go back, you could redo that one and get the comma in the right place, certainly. Ahmed, you're not you're not there yet. The cat crept. It was a marmalade cat. That that's that's not working. So and Manny from St. Wilfred, Susie rode her bike. Full stop. She went down the lane and she was being chased. So you've not managed to combine that into one meaningful sentence there, Manny. You need to have a look at that one again. Rahana <laughs> and Princess, I think you've got the fox. As it had travelled a long way, slept. So you've got it in parenthesis there. Might be better if the fox <laughs> would have travelled a long way, slept. But I like the way you've dropped it in parenthesis which is just a technical term for dropping something into a sentence you have commas either side now I think uh, so. Finley, the giant loomed over the villagers stooped down drank from the pond that sounds <coughs> spot on to me yep sophia from fairburn i think she might have it here now is a question for you after this one pie the cat who was a marmalade cat saw a bird and slowly went along the wall now that's got all the information in and uh, it works. However, if I've said the cat, should I say which instead of who? Because you haven't given the cat a name. The cat who was a what? The cat which was a marmalade cat. Uh, is there a rule about that? Or is it just me being picky? Uh, I think I think it's which. Yes. So because you haven't but given on the, the other cat hand, a name. No. Why, why, why didn't you just say the marmalade cat? Yes. The marmalade cat saw a bird and slowly went along the wall. Yeah, that would marmalade work. Marmalade cat crept along the wall, crept slowly along the wall because... It saw a bird. Yeah. But that's a... Oh, it's Patrick Scott. The marmalade cat went slowly along the wall because it had seen a bird. I think he's nailed it. Yes. It's tricky. It is tricky, yes. Because you've got five sentences worth of information 
trying to cram into one place. Yes, but it, it's what weak writers do. The cat crapped. It was a marmalade cat. It went along the wall. It went slowly. It had seen the bird. <laughs> it got the bird. It ate the bird. Can, can you hear? It's like year one writing, isn't it? It's like machine gun fire. Yes. That, I mean, that's, yeah. And part of it, part of the writing, I suppose, is combining ideas together into sentences that flow. And often you need main and subordinate clauses. And sometimes you need a short, tight, punchy sentence with one clause. The giant loomed over the village, stooped down, drank from the pond. You see, you could go looming over the villagers, the giant stood <laughs> down and drank from the pond. Uh, Olivia's tried to um, uh, play around with it. I think it should be the giant witch was, I don't know who was, tricky one, isn't it? I think it's witch. Yeah, it is. It's not, so I'm not sure it's the giant who was, yes. Yeah, so I, I think was it's witch. Who there. Which was I wouldn't say the giant witch. I don't know. That's it. Hmm. That'd go with who? Yeah. But you wouldn't say the cat who was a marmalade cat. You'd say the cat which was witch, a marmalade. Yes, definitely. But so why would you use who for a giant? Because who is the giant because he's a person? No, he's a giant. Yeah. I don't know. Shane Shane and Millie, the giant loomed over the villagers, stooped down. And drank from the pond. So it's a set, nice sentence of three there. If you said the manager, it'd be who, wouldn't it? Yes. The manager who was rubbish is getting sacked in the morning. That's the one. Yeah. Amelia and Amelia. The marmalade cat crept as it went along the wall. Could tighten that up. You could just go, the mar mar marmalade cat crept along the wall slowly because it had seen the bird. Or you could go slowly, the marmalade cat crept along the wall. Or along the wall, the, man, the marmalade cat crept. <laughs> so lots of different... Or because it had seen a bird, the marmalade cat crept. So lots of variations, John. Absolutely. You can... You can uh... You can come up with a, a very, very different word salad with that that one. Yeah, I mean, Lucy from St. Wilfrid's, the cat, which was a marmalade one, crept slowly along the wall since it had seen a bird. See, that works really well. <laughs> it does. Very, very good. Right, should we and, be uh, coming out? Yeah, um, Jasmine and Lydia as well. The marmalade cat, cat crept slowly along the wall, having seen a bird. Yeah, I like that. Well, well done. Yes, good. Right. Now what, John? Uh, that's we're, we're about. Uh, Is it lunch? Uh, nearly, not quite. Pie blog challenge. I can I can feel hunger coming upon me, and you, you know what I'm like. I need feeding, or I get tetchy on you. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> building on that thing of. The cat went along a wall. It was a marmalade cat. It saw a bird. It went slowly. It got the bird. You've got the same sort of business here. The snow fell. Tom waited. He was in the flat. The phone rang. He picked it up. He listened. He crossed the room. He picked up the suitcase. He opened the door. He went outside. So what we got is <coughs> lots of short sentences. They're all main clauses. And somehow we got to get some sentence variation. Now, it may be that some of them, you want for sort of clarity and crispness, Tom waited. You might want to have that one, for instance, uh, I don't know, as a single sentence for punchiness, for clarity, for, dra for drama. He went outside. Dun, 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 dun. What's going to happen? Some of them you might want to combine. Tom waited inside the flat. At that moment, the phone rang and he picked it up. So... Which ones are you going to have a single, short, punchy clauses? Are you going to join some together? Are you going to have main and subordinate? What sort of linking words are you going to do? Now, <coughs> I can promise you, John, is a difficult activity because you've got to end up with a paragraph that reads really well 
uses the basic information, flows nicely, but obviously it's not a good paragraph at the moment. Now, the yeah, second so game... It's quite easy to, to pick two or three of those, combine them into a sentence, and then do that again and do that again, and maybe turn that lot into three sentences. But then when you read all three sentences... They got they a link. ...well together. So. Yeah. As the snow fell, Tom waited inside the flat, <laughs> etc. I don't know. You've got to play around with it a bit and then read it out aloud to hear whether or not, or read it in your head to hear whether or not it works. Um, now, the one below, join the columns together to create sentences that make sense. Remember to use commas following the subordinate clauses that start the sentences or fall within a sentence. So, um, so you've got three columns. So I took um, as as my starter, the fourth one down, as I could have gone as it was snowing, as it was silent, as it was scary, as there was a snake there, as there was no one there, as there was an odd sound, as it was a strange request. As a, So I could have joined as to any of those. I went for it was a strange request. A request is um, when somebody asks you to do something. As it was a strange request, as it was something peculiar to be asked to do, as it was a strange request. Now, that's a subordinate clause. So I've definitely got to have a comma. As it was a strange request, I took my time. Could have been I ate my breakfast. I played my trombone. I don't know. So you're going to end up with some interesting sentences here. And you'll be linking them together. Um, you could, if you want to, with some of them, you might be able to put the main clause, which is in the third. Um, uh, you could put, sorry, the third column up front. Can you? I took my time as it was silent. Yes. So there are different ways of writing. That's what I'm trying to say, John. But you've got your joining words <coughs> and you've got some clauses there. And now you've got to mess around. Can you put one together for me, John? So, um, uh, although there was an odd sound, I played my music very loudly. Yeah. And where would your <laughs> comma come? No, since there was an odd sound, I played my music very loudly. That would be better. Or I played That's my music very loudly. Since there was an odd sound. Um, so you'd have a comma after since there was an odd sound, comma, I played my music very loudly, or I played my music very loudly, comma, since there was an odd sound. Full stop. Yeah. And actually what you've got is two columns which are potentially um, main clauses. But as soon as you use um, one of those from the first column, it makes it a subordinate. Exactly, yes. It subordinates it. Before there was a bad smell, <laughs> I bought a gas mask. <laughs> After there was a bad smell, <coughs> I ate my breakfast. I don't know. Yeah. So well, you can play around with that one. There's lots of different combinations that you could work with there, I think. Yeah. And the key is to get the, co the comma in the right place. The first one is a very tricky one, that... that um, to get a good paragraph. I'd be interested in hearing some after, of those. After I ate my breakfast, there was a bad smell. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Before I ate my breakfast, I fed the shark. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can, you can have all sorts of uh, fun with that one, um, moving them around. Uh, make, but the, the, the crucial thing is getting the punctuation right. So um yeah, it's grammar. You've got to remember it's grammar we're looking at. So you've got to you've got to double check for the grammar. Right. Okay, so that's it for this week. So we're on half term next week, so we won't be uh uh online next Monday. So we'll see you the Monday after. Uh if you're not on half term next week, obviously we'll send the uh um we'll try and get the notes out to you uh for next week so you've got them in advance for the monday after so uh yeah we won't be here next week we'll see you on monday the 20th for week five of teaching live so that's it from me
Okay, good work. Well done, everybody. Um, and uh, see you in a couple of weeks' time. And David seems to have disappeared completely. I uh, suspect he's got the uh, window cleaner in. So uh, we'll just say bye for, on David's behalf, and we'll see you after half term. Bye-bye. <laughs>